Hi everyone, in this quick overview video, we'll take a quick look at uh, what's Docker and then we'll uh, kind of uh, go through how Docker is different or containerization technology is different from uh, more traditional virtualization based um, approaches and traditional virtual machine based approaches and then finally we'll uh, take a look at how you can use Docker and compare some of the benefits of using Docker. So first off, uh, what exactly is Docker? Chances are you've already come across uh, Docker if you're uh, building and shipping and building various applications and softwares. But fundamentally, Docker is what's referred to as a containerization technology. And it basically supports the development of applications within software containers and has really transformed the way the industry has uh, been developing and shipping applications and uh, for us to understand uh, containerization technology a bit better it's helpful to compare it uh, with um, more traditional virtual machine based environments um, so here on the left hand side uh, is, is uh, an example of how uh, a virtualization um, technology like um, Hyper-V, VMware KVM, Zen, etc. work and on the right hand side is uh, an example, uh, in a conceptual overview of how uh, containerization technologies like Docker for example works. Now uh, if you look at the, the VM uh, way of uh, working with uh, guest OS and applications, so you'll notice that um, you know up until the host OS stack uh, it's pretty much identical, but in terms of a uh, 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 hypervisor based uh, VM, again like um, uh, VMware's uh, solution Hyper-V from Microsoft etc. Uh, the hypervisor basically allows for multiple guest OS's uh, to run on a single host OS and within each guest OS you of course have uh, the complete operating system the relevant binaries for that operating system and finally the applications themselves. So if you think about it, uh, VM hypervisors uh, are basically based on this idea of emulating uh, the entire hardware and the OS upwards and uh, hence it's really really heavy or very very bulky in terms of uh, the support it needs to provide individual apps that level of isolation and access to the hardware. Containers on the other side basically have uh, the same shared operating system uh, and that basically means that they're a lot more efficient than hypervisors in terms of how they manage uh, system resources and instead of virtualizing the entire hardware as you can see here uh, containers basically rest on top of that single host operating system uh, if you're using uh, Linux for example here and that really means that you don't really have this uh, excessive uh, fluff, if you will, uh, to support isolation for individual applications. Uh, so that allows you to run a lot more uh, containers of this application or instances of these applications than you would uh, if you were to use um, a, a hypervisor-based uh, VM. Um, however, you'll of course note that here because we don't have um, different uh, guest OSs, uh, that would imply that each of these containers would uh, uh, would have to use the same underlying operating system. So you can't have container A uh, using Linux and container B uh, intended to be used, say for example, or a Windows operating system. It all has to be on the same operating system. So that's uh, something you'll want to keep in mind, but overall uh, containers do give you that isolation um, across different containers of course, but uh, share the same operating system as well as the appropriate uh, libraries, uh, operating system libraries. So that's um, the difference between uh, a VM based model and uh, a container based model. And then finally, uh, looking at uh, why would you use um, uh, containerization technology like uh, Docker. So it really depends on what role you are uh, within the IT industry. So if you are responsible for hardware and infrastructure or hosting, or if you are a developer or if you are an architect. 
But broadly, these are the top three reasons why you would look at uh, a technology like uh, Docker. So as we discussed, since, uh, since uh, a containerization technology allows you to run a lot more instances on the same hardware, uh, basically it gets you to a point where you can run more applications running on the same hardware and gives you much better hardware utilization and of course uh, an optimization in cost. So basically allows you to do more with less. Uh, so I, I'm sure everybody is in favor of uh, utilizing hardware better particularly if you're looking at large-scale projects like big data projects, uh, analytics projects, Internet of Things style projects where there's a huge demand on hardware and resources that in itself uh, just shaving off, say, uh, you know, um, uh, doubling the, uh, the amount of resources that, uh, you know, that you suddenly have with um, solutions like Docker can make it very attractive. If you are a developer and or a DevOps, uh, then it really allows you to uh, develop solutions um, much more quickly and rapidly. Uh, it uh, it basically allows you to have the same uh, environment, if you will, within your dev environment that you have in production. So it really makes it easy for developers to quickly create, uh, you know, build ready using these ready-to-run containers and applications and makes uh, managing that whole deployment of uh, the applications a lot easier. Uh, so in essence, developers can use Docker to pack the application, ship it, and pretty much run their applications as a lightweight, portable, um, self-contained uh, container, if you will, self-sufficient container uh, that can virtually run on any infrastructure um, so it could be your own data center it could be a private data center a private cloud or public cloud infrastructures like those provided by amazon um, azure from microsoft etc and then finally if uh, you're more inclined towards uh, thinking in terms of uh, architecture um, uh, keeping in mind that uh, a lot, there's um, more recent developments in this idea of developing micro style, microservice style architecture, I'm sorry, is uh, something that Docker allows uh, or promotes that model. So basically the idea of uh, if you're building microservice style architecture is basically moving away from more uh, tightly coupled and monolithic style solution to something that's uh, uh, you know a lot more loosely coupled and uh, so it promotes this idea that you can scale individual services independently and uh, with this idea of uh, a docker uh, you can scale uh, containers quite easily and all that can be controlled that whole scalability and uh, you know that adaptive scale if you will uh, can be supported through uh, software configuration or software based provisioning so it's uh, basically allowing for a newer breed of um, architectures in line with this idea of uh, delivering microservice uh, based architecture. So that in a nutshell is Docker, uh, how Docker is uh, different than uh, virtualization based technology and finally some of the benefits uh, of uh, using Docker. Uh, in future videos, we'll dive into more um, in-depth um, overviews and uh, we'll cover more around Docker. Thanks everyone for watching. See you on the next video.